Refraction masking, getting rid of pesky refraction oddities. The problem, object in front of our refraction shader is seen by our refraction. It's not a big issue for third person games as you won't have that many things passing in front of the camera as, as large objects, but it, it's really ugly in first person because your weapon, if you have a, have a weapon or an object in front of the camera, close to the camera, it'll, it'll really show up in those refractions. So what's the solution? Well, the proper solution would be to render the scene twice once for above the water, and once for below. Probably using two cameras. And by manipulating the camera clip plane in order to mask off the stuff above water and below water. For both cameras, if you have two cameras. However, that brings along its own set of problems. It adds extra complexities because now you have to do a lot of coding and it's extra complexities. You don't need to do all of that and you also add a lot more computationally heavy tasks. And if you work within a uh, deferred rendered pipeline, those uh, frame buffers get quite big. And the, the third problem is that it only works for one surface, one water surface. If you have two, one close to the other, it you you'd, you'd have to render twice the extra scenes for what you already do twice. So you now you have four scenes you need to render. Not a good thing. So what's the solution we're gonna show off today? Well, actually, we're gonna do a shader solution. Creating a mask using depth. It's less computational heavy. That's really all there is to it. And it's, it's less complex, really. But it does come with its own set of problems. One of which, which is probably the only problem is that it's it kind of keeps some of its visual oddities not really but kind of but it's really due to depth inaccuracies so if you go into unity let's create a a uh, refraction mask using depth just to show it off this is the water shader that i previously made if we create like a cube a cube and uh, as you can see, the part of the cube that's above water is basically not seen by the refraction. If you look closely along the edges in the shadow here, you'll see some visual oddities, but those are minor and you take the good with the bad, I suppose. And it's better than if you didn't have it, so that's the only problem. So let's create a shader. So uh, open up the, the the canvas and let's create one. However, I will not create a completely new water shader. And I'm just gonna take off all of these rendering options because we don't need them. Same with casting shadows and uh, culling off. We can keep the render type to opaque and uh, geometry. Let's just save the shader, call it, I don't know, refraction test. I'll just show you the solution, but not the actual water shader or transparency shader. Because the solution is quite simple. It has to do with an if node. That's pretty much everything you need to do is an if, an if node to create the mask. And then we use the information we get from this if node into a LERP node. 
and then we lerp between um, a refracted transparency and a non-refracted tra transparency. Let me just set up some simple texture mappings. Simple normal maps. And a strength. Strength. For the normal map. And then a scene depth. Oh no. Color. Screen color, not scene color. There we go. And then we add this to screen position. Then we put this. Oh, forgot about custom lighting. Put this into custom lighting. Hit compile. And if we uh, just make a new. Let's just make a uh, material using the refraction test. Drag that onto here. Yeah, you can see it's, it's refracting. And if we now create a uh, cube, make it taller, as you can see. Even though this part of the cube is above the the transparency, it's still being seen by the the refraction. Bad. Let's fix. So that's to do with this if node. We need to grab two sets of depth. Depth. Ooh, depth. No. No. Depth. We need screen depth. And we need uh, surface depth. These two. Now if we just plug in scene depth into our debug, just so we can see what what happens. Nothing happens. It's because it's quite large. And it's an eye eye space. If we just set it to 0.1, it, you don't need to do this, but as you can see, it's uh, the Now you can see the the linear fall off of the depth. We're going to use this combined with the surface depth, which only sees this surface's depth, and create a mask. Yeah, set it back to I depth, I space rather. So into A. We plug in our, sc our screen depth and into our B no into our B input. We uh, collect we set our surface depth and into A is larger than B and A is smaller than B. You use two of these values: one which is set to one and one which is set to zero. And then you hook into both of these. A is larger and A is smaller. And if we plug this into our debug, it's completely white. And the reason why is because we also well, there's no way to actually see the uh, the effect of the mask. But the mask is there. It's just exact to the pixel. So we need to take our our um, affected screen UV here and plug that into this, the position of the screen depth. Hit compile and you should already see the mask. Here we go. That's the mask. It doesn't see everything below it, but it does create a mask for everything above it. And then, as I said, you need a clean one of these and one which is affected by normal maps. Create a lerp. The unclean one into B. Copy it. 
can actually set. Now we're doing, we're grabbing twice the, sc uh, the screen color. So this one can, we can set to a reference of of this one. Just you know, so it doesn't sap too much per performance. And uh, hook the clean one into A and use the if node, plug that into alpha. Hit compile. And there you go. Although, as you can see, there's some strange stuff going on with the uh, here. And that's due to what I said earlier with the depth inaccuracies. Although we also don't really need this to be as, as that large. So let's just down sample this into something more like that. That's better. And what we also can do is to multiply this entire thing with a, a um, where is it? Depth fade. There it is. Depth fade. And then a depth fade distance. Oh, forgot about that. Set it to property. Now you won't have those issues of the edges. Oh, right. It's not saturated. There. Now the edges smoothly fall off. Although, as you can see, it still messes up with the edges so underneath, and that's just a, that's normal. That's supposed to be like that because it actually doesn't know how to affect that part of the image, but it does know how to affect this part because it sees that in depth, but it doesn't really see the edges. It doesn't know to smooth out around the entire object. Anyways, that's how easy it is to create a mask. Simply use screen depth, surface depth, and using an if node to create the mask itself. Um, however, that's not the that's not the version that I use for my water shader here. Although it does give you the exact same results, and it is kind of the same thing. It's a different way. This one I got from the the Amplify forums itself because someone asked for something like this, and uh, it, since Shader or um, Amplify Shader Editor d doesn't really have an inbuilt solution for it, they came up with this. It's pretty much the same thing. You have a clean surface depth, an affected screen depth. And then you just subtract from it, saturate it, multiply it by the normals, add that into the screen position, and then into our crab screen color, and whatnot. It gives you the exact same result as the if node solution. And I would probably use the if node solution, but I, I just keep using this one. I don't know why. Now the if node solution, I actually found a while back, several years ago, one on the uh, Shader Forge forums, although you can't find that anymore because they shut those forums down for some reason. And I didn't save, ooh, wrong, yeah. And I didn't save, um, 
the node uh, setup that that person made but it ultimately was this solution right here kinda it required a bit more I think they used step to create the mask itself and a bunch of step nodes but it basically gave you this solution creating a mask there is another solution or quote-unquote solution out there on YouTube created by a an, another youtuber his other tutorials are quite nice but his uh, quote-unquote solution for um, fixing the <laughs> the refraction problem uh, by using the depth fade oh I wouldn't do that it creates more visual oddities and you don't really remove the issue of of the um, of the the refraction that's being seen above all you're doing is basically just making sure that if if it's deep enough you won't see you know, well it's taken up by color so you know you won't see it I would recommend using this solution if you don't go ahead and render the scene twice and then just affect the camera pl clip planes in scripting but this solution works it's quick and easy to make anyone can make them if you have a uh, shader editor yeah that's that's it that's all i wanted to show bye bye